Boy, talk about being in a happy place. This is my happy place. <laughs> All these beautiful plants and flowers. I could be here forever. Fancy filler accent. Now, if it said sassy filler accent, I might buy something. Everybody, thank you so much for coming back and seeing me and Desi and I hope you had a good week and today I want to talk about a couple things when I was doing this video when I started filming I found a song called saying goodbye to who we used to be and that stuck in my head all week so you know I've moved into a new house <laughs> that's the rumor <laughs> And I'm decorating and I'm having a great time but as I'm decorating and I want to show you some of the new things I got you know I can't help myself I started wondering what are my biggest challenges as far as as that song was playing in my head saying goodbye to the person you used to be what are what are my challenges right now as I'm decorating my home and I'm adjusting to a new city and I'm trying to rebuild a life alone and I thought let's talk about this today what are the three biggest challenges you face in your life right now over 60 what are the three biggest challenges I face at 68 years old I haven't lived in a home in 12 years. I've been in apartments and there's nothing wrong with apartments. They're lovely. But I wanted a home and I was so passionate about it. And this week I really had to face exactly why was I so passionate about getting a house. And I walked out in my backyard and I realized all the plans I had for this beautiful backyard, they weren't going to fit. The land wouldn't support it. The size of my backyard wouldn't support it. And I thought back on what was it about a backyard that symbolized happiness and home to me. And then I remembered, you know, I was raised by my grandfather and in our home there, he had planted these beautiful white flowering spireas. Whenever we had a family portrait, we would always stand in front of the spireas. And so there was something about, I want to order those. And they're hard to get, but I found some on Amazon. I want the flowering spireas to be part of the bones of that backyard. That's where I'm going to begin. And I felt really good about that. And I felt really good that I gave myself permission to, to drift back in time and realize that I don't know where I'm going if I don't know where I've been. And everything happy was when I was growing up in my grandfather's house and, and we would go out and we would plant. And that was happy to me. My grandfather died when I was 10 
and so many things died with him. So I think one of my biggest challenges is to remember why I wanted this home so badly, but also to remember that a happy home also means a happy life. And not 100% of my energy can be geared towards making everything perfect in this home. I have to go out and live. I have to make friends. I have to date a little bit. I have to go dance and I, I've got to find a new jazz club on Sunday nights. house that I have ever lived in, I lived in with my husband. So when I needed the window to be unstuck or I ordered a bird bath and it, it wouldn't stay together and I had to go get a, a hammer and hammer all the parts together and I know that sounds ridiculous but all my life I would say, Bill, can you help me with this bird bath and he'd be right there and He'd be fixing everything and he's not there. There's nobody coming to help me unstick that window or to put that park bench together. When I am the happiest, that's when grief will hit me from behind and I don't understand that. But the other night, everything was looking so pretty and I was so happy. And as I was walking on the sun porch, all of a sudden, I just thought how much Bill would have loved that porch. And I'm thinking, why am I thinking this? He's been gone for almost two years. And, and we divorced in 2012. Why am I feeling this grief? And that is a challenge. And that is something that I have to work on because 90% of the time I am so happy and I'm embracing life and I love the yard and I love decorating. But every once in a while, that grief is like a knife and it hurts. I think we feel grief when we're happy because we got used to sharing our joy with the person that we loved. And now we glance over and there's nobody there. But we go on. And it makes me think that it's more important to laugh on somebody's shoulder than to cry. One time I tried this mascara better than sex. You know, if they had named this better than spaghetti, I would have been a lot more impressed. A woman alone faces so many different challenges. But for me, I think one of the biggest challenges is defining myself by my age. And I'm 68. I'm not 98. Now, I don't mean to offend anybody who's 98. I did that once. I said I'm not 98 and somebody said I'm 98 and they got mad at me. Anyway. I'm 68 and sometimes it seems that I define myself by my age, you know, how I should behave or how I should dress. And I know that I, I know better, but I do know that I can slip into that way of thinking. And that's crazy. But sometimes, you know, I'll be getting ready to go somewhere and I'll catch a, a glimpse of myself in the mirror and I don't recognize my face or I don't recognize my hair or I don't recognize my body from yesterday. <laughs> and I know it's hard to talk about these things without sounding kind of like an ass or superficial, but it's part of being a woman. And if you had self-esteem problems when you were younger, you probably have them a little bit when you get older because so many things change and our identity and our self-esteem are so married to each other. So it is a challenge for me to feel 
good about myself, to not overly worry about what might happen in the future or, oh, my knee hurts, maybe I need a replacement. I mean, I can jump to all kinds of amazing conclusions because in my mind, I'm 98 years old today and it's, it's a challenge. When my self-esteem isn't right, that means that when I walk out that door, I'm not as confident. That means that maybe in a conversation, I'm a little bit timid. That means that maybe I'm going to turn down that invitation from that lovely man that just asked me out. <laughs> Where is he? <laughs> it's important. It's important that we are not defined by our age. I've been here on YouTube for about eight years and every single week, someone will leave a comment. A beautiful lady will leave a comment saying, I've given up. I don't care how I look anymore. I look so bad. I'm done. Please don't feel that way. So much of being attractive and being a, a vibrant woman is in your swag, in your confidence. So most of the time I feel great and I'm proud to tell people my age. It honestly doesn't bother me. But every once in a while, it will bother me. There are ways that helps me feel young. And learning something new always does it, even though I'm getting a little overwhelmed with everything is smart. It's smart TV and a smartphone and smart headphones and a smart shovel. I mean, <laughs> I'm smarted right out, all right? I can't learn anything more, I swear, but I'm gonna try. So learning something helps me stay young. And meeting new people, that helps me more than anything feel younger and not old and going out and doing things and making a difference, volunteering, uh, just going to a festival and talking to the artists there. It means so much, making new friends. All of those things make me feel young. And I guess the last thing is like a great outfit, some new lipstick. I know it's corny, but I can feel 16 again if I get just the right shade lipstick. And I never want to lose that. I love those little things that, that make me feel kind of good about myself. I think for an older woman, self-esteem and identity is a very funny business. Nobody is ever going to remember the handbag that I bought, or the high heels that I wore, or the lipstick that I chose. But they will remember the love that I gave. And they will remember how I made them feel. Hey everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I loved every second of it. And if you get a chance down below, could you tell me what your biggest challenge is over 60? It's so good, I think, when we share our lives together. Please have yourself a very happy, safe, wonderful, brand new week. And when you're done with your week, you come back and see me and Desi, okay? All right, it's a deal.